rewatching OG X Men before '97. Officially done with the second half of season three, and I gotta start this off by asking, man, what did he do to make them niggas that mad? Like, not only did you get fired on your day off, they repossessed your show before the rollout even started. What happened? But on episode 11, and we start with bad boy Big Brother Bobby, and am I tripping or is this like the second time in close proximity that we've seen Jubilee crushing on someone who's a grown ass man, right after clearly stating she is a teenager, followed by some rebellious act for somebody who clearly does not want her for good and valid reasons. After fighting their own great value versions and watching Bobby get his girl taken from everybody, we learn the government now has their own X-Men. I ain't seen a man this broken since Hawk Girl showed Green Lantern he was a side dude in front of their entire team. Next episode, I'm noticing the X-Men get attacked more in this show of civilians than they do in costume, and, and maybe, maybe mutants aren't the issue. Maybe New York is just like an effed up place to live in any Marvel universe. Also, y'all got horseback riding up there? Then we have Sauron, who unlike Lord of the Rings is a power sapping dino man, but does have magic eyes and does listen to a magical religious rock, kidnaps Storm and turns her powers up to 10. And is it me, or does the dude, with all the screaming, does the dude who plays Sauron kinda sound like the person who played Vulture in Toby's Spider-Man on PS2? No? Just me? Okay, well the religious rock turns out to be like an ancient being who ends up coming to life, goes crazy kaiju, and then is quickly defeated. A lot of giant people bursting out of mountains in this show. We go on to the Dark Phoenix. We see they're trying these treatments to get this bad bird out of Gene and nothing works. And they basically tell Charles, hey, she ain't gotta go home, but she can't stay here. Gene telepathically calls out the Scott who forgets about her in 2.5 seconds because him and Gambit went to go see Taylor Swift's rumored cameo character from Deadpool 3 and after saving her, Scott has now become her Travis Kelsey. And now comic variant Good Dick Summers has entered the chat because Gene comes out of coma just to see this happening. Now granted she was hypnotized but she did get her lick back immediately. Two out of four episodes of this saga end and we now have Gene being mentally manipulated by these people who look like they're fresh out the Boston Tea Party and I kind of forgive the movies now. Like, they tried to do something with it, whereas the Phoenix is like this major force, and both times we've seen it brought out in this show, it's brought out via a conflict involving groups of people we are not going to remember and just met in a situation that could have easily just been a Jean Grey story. Like, out of the five times I've seen this attempted, I think Ultimate Alliance using her to fend off Mephisto was like the greatest representation of where she really ranks. Also, the Lalandra and Shi'ar Empire stuff was really handled a lot better in that game, too. And then in this show, even when she asked for it, Wolverine struggles to put down the Phoenix, whereas X3 still wasn't easy, but he took old girl out back like old Yeller. And then doubled down on it when he would have flashbacks of her in other movies. I say all that to say the Phoenix flies off again, and after a brief bunch of cameos from heroes we're never going to team up with or see in an episode, now we're back to these alien people. Or not, because Gene just punches their ship and then ping-pongs right back to Earth? You love me. Nothing will ever change that. He says after tonguing down Dazzler only two episodes ago. And after the best episode of this second saga, now the Shi'ar show back up, wanting Jean's head. They battle it out and apparently Xavier and Lalandra are still in love, which is clearly shown by the fact that she had a space wheelchair just ready for him. And during this big battle, they end up reawakening the Phoenix, the very thing they're trying to avoid that would have laid dormant if they just left it alone. And apparently you just needed to hit it really hard or enough times because after a failed Akira laser, the Phoenix comes out and just separates from Jean, and all is well. Sidebar, cause it's like unavoidably noticeable at this point, that is Morph's death scream from the first episode of the show, and I think they've used it twice every episode this season so far. Next episode, Yasop comes back to Earth looking for Scott, hiding from the same people that just tried to kill Jean. I mean, Scott's dad comes to Earth looking for help from the X-Men to fight off a bad space cop and prove his innocence. And for the big finale, a space fish just crashes in the desert and Wolverine just happens to be there because he keeps picking these like Piccolo-esque places to go meditate and train. Meanwhile, Rogue is in her room having a fit because she can't have the same relationship that Scott and Jean do like Gambit isn't two doors down and given your power set, if you really want to imitate that relationship, you can put whoever you love near death and bring it back as many times as you want. I feel like what this show has been trying to tell us for three seasons is that physical touch is her love language and Rogue just really needs some dick. Look, I'm just saying combat wise, if a glove on the hand solves that problem, Gambit wearing one in the right place might solve a lot of others. Who says an X-Man can't have a little fun? Literally you at the beginning of this episode when you were punching air in your bedroom. But again, it all turns out to be some trick for some other group of aliens that Wolverine keeps calling roaches, which I feel like is accurate even though they're like bug lizards or something. They're defeated. They go away, the fish flies off, everyone's happy except Rogue, the end.
I like this season. It was a little up and down, and like I said before, it was a bit all over the place. The Dark Phoenix stuff, those last two episodes are cool, but like I said, how we got there was forgettable. I, I, couldn't t I can't tell you one of those characters' names right now. And after finishing this whole thing, what what was that end credit scene in episode ten? Was that like a was it like a crossover episode or a movie or, or a promo that I wasn't born for? Anyhow, I am on season four now, that which apparently is the longest season out of the five. Um, probably gonna be Friday and Monday that I get those two done, and then I'm gonna try to get the fifth one out before ninety seven drops. Y'all stay tuned. This this is a little, this was a bumpier part of the ride, but I'm still hanging on there.